This week in our series of reports on UFOs, we've learned a number of things. That not everybody who sees a UFO is crazy. That our government has lied about UFO information. That it's withheld UFO files. Did you ask any questions? About no, panels? there's no asking there's questions. There's no asking questions. No. There Are has to be some people right. that know everything. I think a lot of that is private industry because the government is just so leaky. Bob Lazar has been a fascinating figure in the realm of ufology and conspiracy theories for decades, captivating the public with his claims of working on alien technology at a secret site near Area 51. You used to work at Area 51. Well, you know, we Careful. want to be accurate. Okay. Area S4. Lazar's narrative is particularly intriguing due to his assertion of holding degrees in physics and electronic technology from the prestigious Massachusetts Institute of Technology and the California Institute of Technology, also known as Caltech. These academic credentials are crucial to his story, as they would, in theory, make him more than qualified to work on the advanced projects he described. However, Lazar's educational claims have been met with skepticism, as no records of his attendance or graduation from these institutions have been found. Um, again, I forgot where the hell I am. This lack of evidence, including the absence of any corroborating accounts from classmates or professors, has led many to question the authenticity of his educational background. Further scrutiny of Lazar's academic history suggests he might have pursued education at a junior college or taken electronics courses elsewhere. While commendable, these alternative educational paths would not typically qualify someone for the types of roles Lazar claims to have held, particularly those involving reverse engineering extraterrestrial technology. Lazar's most famous claim centers around his alleged employment at S4, a supposed secretive site near Area 51. He describes S4 as a facility embedded in a mountainside containing extraterrestrial spacecrafts. According to Lazar, his work focused on understanding and replicating the craft's advanced propulsion technologies, which he claims were powered by Element 115, also known as Moscovium, a then unknown element. Despite the detailed nature of Lazar's descriptions, the US government and military have consistently denied the existence of a facility like S-4 and any employment of Lazar in projects involving extraterrestrial technology. The lack of verifiable evidence supporting Lazar's employment or the existence of the technologies he describes has been a significant obstacle in validating his claims. The skepticism surrounding Lazar's narrative is compounded by the absence of evidence confirming his educational background. Without concrete proof, Lazar's extraordinary assertions remain a subject of debate, leaving his credibility in question among critics and supporters alike. In the enigmatic world of Bob Lazar and his allegations about Area 51, there's a detail that continues to intrigue both skeptics and believers. Lazar's description of a unique hand scanner used for security at the S4 facility. This isn't your ordinary biometric device that we're accustomed to today, such as fingerprint or retina scanners. According to Lazar, this scanner was far more sophisticated, focusing on the bones within the hand through a series of light emissions. It's a compelling aspect of his story, especially considering the emergence of photographic evidence years later that corroborated the existence of similar technology used in classified environments. Now, in order to gain entrance to the facility, Bob Lazar depicted this security device as utilizing pins of light to measure the bone length and other unique characteristics beneath the skin of the hand. This method of identification is intriguing because it leverages the distinctiveness of an individual's hand bone structure, which, much like fingerprints, offers a highly unique identifier. The scanner operated by emitting narrow beams of light onto the hand, with these beams penetrating the skin to interact differently with the bones beneath. This interaction allowed the device to map the hand's bone structure, creating a detailed biometric profile based on bone lengths and spatial relationships. The critical piece of evidence supporting Lazar's claim came to light when photographs and documents of a device known as the Identimat surfaced. This device, used in sensitive locations including government and military facilities, functioned in a remarkably similar manner to Lazar's descriptions. It measured hand characteristics using light beams, focusing on the bone structure for identification purposes. 
The Identimat's emergence, a technology developed in the 1970s and deployed in high security areas, provided a tangible piece of evidence that Lazar might have been familiar with the security measures of highly classified environments. The discovery of the Identimat technology was a pivotal moment for those following Lazar's story. It suggested that Lazar had detailed knowledge of the security practices within government facilities, which for some added a layer of credibility to his other claims. This point is particularly interesting when considering the broader context of Lazar's narrative and the skepticism surrounding his educational and employment history. The hand scanner's description and the subsequent validation through the Identimat's discovery showcase how specific details in Lazar's story have found support, reigniting debates about the veracity of his claims regarding Area 51 and his work on extraterrestrial technology. Among the many fascinating claims Bob Lazar has made regarding his alleged work on extraterrestrial technology near Area 51, one of the lesser known yet thought-provoking assertions involves the origins of religion. According to Lazar, during his tenure at the S-4 site, he was privy to briefing documents that offered an unconventional perspective on human history, particularly concerning how early human religious beliefs might have been shaped by extraterrestrial encounters. Lazar's claim dives into the possibility that extraterrestrial beings interacted with early humans who might have perceived these advanced visitors as divine or supernatural entities. This, he suggests, influenced the nascent stages of religious development, embedding the presence and actions of these beings into the very foundation of emerging religious practices and mythologies. The documents purportedly provided a reinterpretation of historical religious events, hinting that accounts deemed divine or miraculous in ancient texts could, in fact, be descriptions of encounters with advanced extraterrestrial technology and beings. The profound implication here is that many foundational religious doctrines might stem from humanity's misinterpretations of these extraterrestrial interactions. However, as with many of Lazar's claims, this intriguing narrative has been met with considerable skepticism. Critics argue that the absence of physical evidence and the inability to independently verify the existence of such documents significantly undermines the credibility of these assertions. Additionally, the notion that the rich tapestry of Earth's diverse religious traditions could all trace back to a single extraterrestrial origin is seen by many scholars and theologians as an oversimplification of the complex and multifaceted history of religious evolution. This claim about extraterrestrial influence on the origins of religion adds yet another layer to the already complex and controversial story of Bob Lazar. If Bob Lazar is right about all of this, does this mean aliens have been in contact with Earth for thousands of years? Bob Lazar's story takes a deep dive into the realm of science fiction with his claims about UFO technology and Element 115. According to Lazar, the secret S-4 facility near Area 51 housed extraterrestrial spacecraft powered by technology that was not just beyond human capabilities at the time, but also seemed to challenge the very laws of physics as we understand them. At the heart of these spacecraft was Element 115, an element that, according to Lazar, was the key to unlocking their mind-boggling capabilities. Before it was officially recognized and named Muscovium in 2003, Element 115, as Lazar described it, possessed properties that differed significantly from the scientific community's understanding. He claimed this element could produce a gravitational field when bombarded with protons, leading to a reaction that could generate an anti-gravity field around the craft. This description paints a picture of a clean and highly efficient energy source, capable of propelling the spacecraft across vast distances by bending space-time. The propulsion mechanism, as Lazar detailed, revolved around anti-gravity technology, allowing the crafts to manipulate space-time around them. This technology purportedly reduced the craft's mass to nearly zero, enabling instantaneous travel across space. Lazar's explanation of gravity wave amplification as the method by which these UFOs operated suggests a technology capable of pulling the craft forward by generating a wave ahead of it, thus falling towards its destination at incredible speeds. Lazar also described the interior layout of these crafts, which was fundamentally designed to support this advanced propulsion system. The control systems were integrated with the gravitational drive, facilitating what one can only imagine as seamless navigation and operation. The theoretical capabilities for travel that Lazar outlined are nothing short of revolutionary, suggesting that interstellar journeys could be undertaken in fractions of the time required by traditional propulsion methods. 
essentially making the vastness of space navigable within human lifetimes. The narrative Bob Lazar presents is a compelling blend of mystery and technological marvel, offering a glimpse into what could be if his accounts hold any truth. The stories of Element 115 and the propulsion technologies of UFOs as described by Lazar continue to fuel discussions and debates on the possibilities of space travel and the existence of extraterrestrial technology on Earth. What's going on up there could be the most important event in history. You're talking about physical contact and proof from another, another system, another planet, another intelligence. That's got to be the biggest event in history, and it's real and it's there. I'm convinced that what I saw is absolute proof of that. There is, there is no way we could have created those systems. There's no way we could have made the disks, the power supplies, anything to go with them. Bob Lazar's assertions about Element 115 are among the most talked about in UFO and conspiracy theory circles, largely due to their intriguing blend of advanced alien technology and secretive government operations. Lazar claimed that during his time at the S-4 facility near Area 51, he encountered alien spacecraft powered by Element 115. This element, he argued, was central to the craft's propulsion systems, enabling them to manipulate gravity and perform maneuvers that defy the laws of physics as we understand them. He described Element 115 as a powerful energy source, used not only for propulsion, but also to power various systems within the spacecraft. One of the more striking aspects of Lazar's narrative is his claim that Element 115 had stable isotopes, contrary to the highly unstable Muscovium isotopes discovered by scientists in 2003. Lazar suggested these stable isotopes had a significantly longer half-life, making Element 115 a practical energy source. He even hinted at a depth of knowledge about different isotopes of this element, some stable and some not, suggesting a level of interaction that goes beyond mere speculation. Additionally, Lazar's story is steeped in notions of covert government knowledge. He alleged that the US government had been in possession of Element 115, and consequently the technology it powered, long before its recognition by the scientific community. He linked this possession directly to the government's alleged retrieval and study, possibly even reverse engineering of alien spacecraft. These claims have fueled numerous conspiracy theories, suggesting that the government has secret knowledge about extraterrestrial beings and technology, often cited in discussions about UFO cover-ups and clandestine government projects. While Lazar's claims are undeniably fascinating and have captivated many, they remain unverified and are frequently met with skepticism by the scientific community. I am telling the truth. I, I, I've tried to prove that. Uh... The primary reasons for this skepticism are the lack of empirical evidence supporting his claims and the inconsistencies between his narrative and established scientific knowledge. Now here is where things get interesting, which add credibility to Bob's claims of element 115. The discovery of Moscovium happened after Lazar was talking about it for some time. Back in 2003, a group of Russian and American scientists working together at the Joint Institute for Nuclear Research in Dubna, Russia, made a remarkable breakthrough. They managed to create this new element using a particle accelerator, which is a bit like a super-powered microscope that can see atoms. They did this by smashing together atoms of americium and calcium. Think of it like a cosmic game of pool at an atomic level. This creation was initially named Ununpentium, a bit of a tongue twister, right? But later it got the name Moscovium as a nod to the Moscow region where it was discovered. Now, Moscovium isn't quite what you'd call a stable element. It's incredibly unstable, actually. The isotopes, which are like different versions of the element, don't last long. We're talking milliseconds to a few seconds. This makes it pretty much unusable for anything long term. Imagine trying to use a battery that only lasts a few seconds. Not very practical, right? It's also super radioactive, so you'd need some serious equipment and safety measures to work with it. Here's where things get a bit more Hollywood. Bob Lazar, a name you might have heard, had some pretty out there claims about element 115 long before it was officially discovered. He said it was a stable, energy-rich element used in alien spacecraft he allegedly saw at a secret facility near Area 51. Now scientists have raised their eyebrows at this because Moscovium is nothing like what Lazar described. It's super unstable and not something you'd find powering a spaceship or anything else for that matter. 
There's also been a lot of chatter about Lazar's background. Well, they're trying to make me a non-person. Well, the schools that I went to, the hospital that I was born at, past job, and uh, essentially nothing comes up with my name in it. He claimed to have worked at some pretty prestigious places, but when people checked, there were no records of him there. It's a bit like saying you played for a famous football team, but there's no record of you ever being on the team. So what's the takeaway from all this? Well, the discovery of Muscovium is a big deal in science, showing us new things about the atomic world. Bob Lazar's story about using gravity waves for alien spacecraft propulsion is something straight out of a sci-fi movie, and it's been a hot topic for those interested in UFOs and unexplained phenomena. He claimed that while working at this secret S-4 facility near Area 51, he saw alien spacecraft that used gravity waves for movement. Imagine spacecraft twisting and warping spacetime itself to zip around at speeds faster than light, doing things that would leave our best aircrafts in the dust. That's what Lazar talked about, a kind of technology that's like nothing we have or even understand today. Now, he linked all this to Element 115, saying it was used in a reactor to create these gravity waves. The idea was that this element could somehow generate a massive gravitational field, letting the spacecraft control gravity waves at will. But here's the catch, the real element 115, known as Muscovium, is nothing like what Lazar described. It's super unstable and breaks down incredibly fast, so the idea of it being a stable, long-lasting power source doesn't really hold up. Lazar's claims take a real leap from what we know about physics, Today's science doesn't support the idea of manipulating gravity for propulsion. It's a fascinating idea, sure, but we just don't have any evidence or technology that can do this yet. It's like he's talking about a whole different realm of physics, way beyond our current understanding. While theoretical physics does play around with concepts like warp drives and bending spacetime, these are still in the realm of theory, not something we've actually seen or made happen. The discovery of gravitational waves back in 2016 was a real game-changer in astrophysics. It's like we had this incredible prediction from Albert Einstein about how massive objects like black holes could send ripples through space-time. And then, suddenly we had the tools to actually see these ripples. The Laser Interferometer Gravitational Wave Observatory, or LIGO for short, played a huge role in this. They have these ultra-sensitive setups in Louisiana and Washington that can pick up the tiniest distortions in space-time caused by gravitational waves passing through Earth. What's really cool is how they first detected these waves. It was from two massive black holes way out in space, about 1.3 billion light-years away, smashing into each other. The collision was so powerful that it sent these waves across the cosmos, and the precision of LIGO's instruments is mind-blowing. They detected changes smaller than a proton's diameter. This discovery kicked off a whole new way of looking at the universe, adding gravitational waves to our toolkit alongside the usual telescopes that observe light. But here's where things get a bit tricky. Bob Lazar and his claims about using gravity waves for powering alien spacecraft. His story is quite different from what LIGO found. Lazar talked about artificially creating and controlling these waves for space travel, which is a whole different ballgame. The gravitational waves LIGO detected are natural occurrences from colossal cosmic events, not something we can make or harness for zooming around in space. In the science world, Lazar's ideas about using gravity waves for propulsion don't really line up with what we know and can do. We're still at a point where manipulating gravity waves like he described is beyond our reach. It's one thing to detect these waves from cosmic events. It's quite another to create and control them for space travel. While physicists do play around with theories of warp drives and bending space-time, it's important to remember these are still in the realm of theory. Bob Lazar really stirred the pot with his tales about Area 51 and this mysterious S4 facility, didn't he? So let's chat about what he said and why it's got people talking for years. First up, Area 51, it's real, that's for sure. Tucked away in the Nevada desert, it's part of the Nevada Test and Training Range and run by the US Air Force. The place is shrouded in secrecy, which you can imagine has sparked all sorts of wild theories. Some people think they're testing experimental aircraft and weapons there, while others go full sci-fi, believing it's all about aliens and their spacecraft. What really put Area 51 on the map was Bob Lazar spilling the beans in the late 1980s. Before then, it was pretty much just known to the military and local folks. But Lazar's stories, 
They turned it into this epicenter of alien conspiracy theories, making it a household name and the subject of countless TV shows and movies. Now, Lazar's claims about this S4 site near Area 51 are where things get really juicy. He claimed he worked there, at an even more top-secret place than Area 51. According to him, S4 was all about reverse-engineering alien tech, focusing on how their spacecraft zoomed around. He even described this place as having these hangars built into a mountain, with doors camouflaged to blend in with the desert. Inside, he said he saw actual flying saucers and the big bombshell. Lazar claimed he saw alien spacecraft at S4 and talked about their propulsion systems, mentioning this mysterious Element 115 as their power source.